and they eval evaluate how you um, how you are as a person. Are you easy to work with under stress? Yes. Evaluate like to te or to um, to say basically how something is. Um, I don't know. They matter. test you are and see how you good you are at something, guard. And it would be like if we pulled everybody away from you, guard, and we went and talked, and you stayed over here, and we asked everybody, "Is guard a good teammate? Should he be here? Should we do this?" Blah blah blah, stuff like that. And everyone gets to say what you actually like. Yeah. So, with that, you go through SEER and then MOS phase, and I'm an engineer, so it's um, a lot of demolitions and explosives, and then you do construction. So we build and uh, blow up, and so that's uh, a long little stretch, um, and then everything comes together in uh, Robin Sage. And that's a month-long, um, cul like culminating event. It brings everything you've learned all together, and then they put you into these scenarios, and you have to operate. And um, so, all that being said, ended up I I won my green beret and um, went to my first unit, which was in Germany. Our first battalion of tenth group is in Germany. And we deployed right away to Afghanistan, uh, which was my first um, first deployment. And we operated much how um, we're supposed to operate. Um, and we would go out every night and hit compounds and take bad guys um, back to our compound and question them and try and have follow-on missions from there and use that intelligence um, to um, catch more bad guys. Well, um, throughout that time, once we got back from that deployment, um, my behavior didn't, didn't change. Um, and shortly after that, uh, I was home on leave during... Um, our Christmas block leave, and I met Alan, which is my wife, my, uh, my sister introduced me, um, and we hit it off, uh, and everybody who knew me, I'm very awkward around girls, so, um, everybody jokes whenever we would go out, um, on the town, uh, that I'd just be talking to girls about the weather. Um, and so went home and met Alan, and we hit it off. And it was um, like just next level for me. And went home and told everybody. Everybody didn't believe me. Uh, but we ended up getting married. And right when we got married, I realized what I'm doing, something is wrong, and I didn't know how to be a good husband, I didn't know what to do, but my upbringing, um, I definitely knew the direction to look, and so I, I started to kind of dabble in in the Bible and trying looking in Proverbs, looking in the New Testament on what what a husband should be. Well, then shortly after that, we got married, and we uh, nine months after that, we ended up um, having Ethan, and so that further further scared me, and I didn't know what to do, and. Uh, so all this time, I'm, I'm still not right with Jesus, but I'm, I'm kind of dabbling in the area where I know feels like that's what right is just because of my upbringing. And uh, so God's kind of given me these, 
these wake up calls or these alarms. Um, I'm still hitting the snooze button, if that makes sense. Um, but I ended up, um, we fast forward and we moved back to Colorado Springs and we're pregnant with the, our second son, Colton. And I get deployed to Afghanistan again. Um, and during that, we, uh, I was able to do a few missions and then come back home, see the birth, um, and then went back to Afghanistan. Shortly after getting back to Afghanistan, we were dictated a mission, which typically doesn't happen. Um, but just like the military goes, um, there are times when, um, you are told what to do and, um, you will execute. So with that, we were told we were to clear a valley, um, which is typically not done by special forces. What's up, buddy? Uh, to to perform no uh, well it can't it, it to to do a task. What's a task? To um, a job. A job. Yeah, to do a mission. You know what a mission is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we we were told we had to do a mission, and that mission wasn't our typical mission. So we have the way we operate in. Um, in a uh, combat environment and non-combat environment is we have a partner force that we train up and we bring our partner force along with us and we fight together. Yes. Uh, normally. Normally. Does that make sense? So normally we would... Um, have a partner force and so we had we had our partner force and we were on helicopters and we got dropped off um, in the middle of this valley really early in the morning and we took a compound we broke into the front door and we held there until daylight uh, because we were waiting on air support and some other things that we needed during daytime. And where we were, there was um, this mountain range that most helicopters couldn't go over. Um, and the conditions had to be just right. And if that pass ever got clouded in or where they couldn't see, they normally weren't able to, to, to bring us in. Well, they were able to drop us off and light came up and we started moving and clearing through this valley. And when we clear, you're going basically from compound or, or house to house and you're first knocking and then if they don't answer you break the door down or blow the door off and then you go and search because there's bad guys in the in the area so this valley had a bunch of bad guys uh, with a bunch of materials that were bad for the u.s what's up um if you like broke in and they had like guns um would they like try and shoot you or Well, uh, it, it kind of depends. Um, if they were in a advantageous spot, they would hide and, and wait till we got into a little ambush area and then they would shoot. But typically we have a lot more speed um, and capabilities than they do. So there's measures that we have in place that um, Normally we can stun them and confuse them and, um, and we can uh, normally come out on top on that situation. What was that?
Capability. Capability. Oh, what? Wh like how much you're able to do. Yeah. So uh, 